Big news broke late last week at Meta Platforms, AKA Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. This plays into the rant that I had in our last video about this AI hype cycle. This is a fantastic learning opportunity for us as investors. Casey and I have been thinking about some talking points regarding this series of meta blog posts about AI. Here are a few takeaways for you to keep in mind to kick off the new week. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. A couple weeks ago over on Jose Naharo's Semiconductor Investing and More podcast, uh, I outlined how Meta had apparently hired about 10 employees from a UK startup called GraphCore. I basically posited that this probably didn't mean Meta was getting ready to deploy its own in-house chip design. And sure enough, here we are a couple weeks later, Meta provides this blog update that indeed they have been designing their own chips in-house. So that means Meta joins some other fellow tech giants in designing their own in-house chips for AI. Of course, we know Google Cloud has been working on this, Amazon AWS uh, working on its own AI training and inference chips, now Meta. They announced two specific chips. The first, MSVP, Meta Scalable Video Processor, basically designed uh, to help with the massive amount of, of video that's watched on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, and an increasing amount of video on demand services consumed on Facebook social media apps. And the second one called the Meta Training and Inference Accelerator, a chip designed specifically at this point, primarily for inference, AI inference. We'll get into what that is here in just a moment. But the first question here with big tech all designing their own chips, is NVIDIA in trouble? In fact, some estimates point towards NVIDIA having an 80 to 90% market share of AI chips. And with big tech, uh, a primary user and developer of AI, now designing their own chips, it would seem that NVIDIA could lose a lot of business going forward. Simple answer to this question, no, NVIDIA is not in trouble. On the contrary, NVIDIA still has tons of growth potential in the years ahead. Bear in mind that this new type of AI that has captured the public's imagination with a lot of help from news and media outlets, this is a brand new market being created. So a lot of these companies very early on still in developing their own in-house chips, basically they're looking for ways to save on operating costs. NVIDIA is still the market share leader in this department. And this is a new market. So they are the market share leader and really, uh, in many ways, the pioneer, the creator of this brand new market for their chips. NVIDIA is going to be just fine. We don't know how many billions of dollars per year this new market will be. But what we do know is we have many years ahead of us of growth in this new generative AI marketplace that NVIDIA has quickly come to dominate. Now, this is not a video uh, explaining why we think NVIDIA is a buy right now. Uh, on the contrary, a, a very solid argu argument could be made that NVIDIA stock is, at the moment, way overpriced. Um, in fact, a couple months ago, we made a video describing uh, why we trimmed our position in NVIDIA. Still our largest position, uh, and it keeps getting bigger. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just take a look at the NVIDIA stock chart over the last year. Uh, something similar happening at Meta. This is also not a video explaining why Meta is a buy. You could also make a similar argument that Meta stock is also overpriced. Uh, another one of our top holdings, we're happy we held on to it through the nastiness of the bear market last year. So we're not saying either of these stocks are a buy, uh, but this is again, a learning opportunity. So uh, point number two, 
I think an important thing to keep in mind is what exactly are these chips Meta is designing? What what is the purpose for them? So let's talk a little bit about how this new generative AI even works in the first place. What is generative AI and how does it work? Basically, generative AI uh, is an algorithm. You can think of this as a, a, a very complex piece of software and set of instructions that has been trained using massive amounts of data. And then once it's trained, it can be used to create, uh, I'll say create maybe in parentheses, because it's using past data that humans created, past intelligence that humans created to generate new things. It could be uh, a body of text, like if you've used uh, OpenAI's chat GPT service, or if you've used Google Bard, you ask it a question and it gives you a human-like response using past data, data that it was trained on, or it might be a text to image or text to video service. You describe what it, you want an image to look like. It spits out a picture, but again, it's creating this based off of past intelligence, past creative work that was made by people. So there are two stages to this. There's the training stage. Uh, by and large, that's where most of the market is for this AI, at least up until this year anyways, most of this market was the training. And that's where NVIDIA was focusing a lot of its work for years now. This is not new news that NVIDIA has been working on this AI. Uh, I talked about this years ago. I, I went to NVIDIA's headquarters and chatted with them about the work they were doing in AI training. CEO Jensen Wong has been perfectly transparent on this on almost every earnings call for years now about this coming wave of new AI thanks to their GPU work. Uh, so basically step one is the training. And then step two, this is where most of the future work is going to be done. That's the inference. That's after the AI algorithm has been trained, inference is when it spits out a response. Again, uh, a simple example of this, uh, this even happens in a, a simple Google search. You type in a search, Google's algorithm uh, does some inference work. It basically produces an answer for you. So this is very, actually very similar to how the human mind works. Most of the work is inference. Step one is the training. Step two is the inference. So let's say, you know, when we're children, we learn that the name of the color that we call the sky is blue. The sky is blue. We have been trained to think, okay, this color that we're looking at in the sky is blue. That's the training. Maybe you learn that once. And then for the rest of your life, you can infer a lot of other information from that one piece of information that you were, you were trained on, that you learned. Uh, you see similar things that are uh, the same color or a similar color, and you say that car is blue, for example. So that's the inference. That's where most of the computing work is being done going forward. The training has been complete. Now you have all of this inference. You have people uh, typing in questions and prompts to this AI model. Uh, maybe they're asking for an image to be generated. That algorithm needs to infer an answer based off of the training that was done, perhaps at this point, many months or even many years ago, and provides you a response. So companies like Meta, Amazon, AWS, also at Google Cloud, working on inference chips that can run very efficiently and basically save them on operating costs, things like energy, because the data centers that house these big AI algorithms and that do the inference work eat up a ton of power. So a lot of these chips that they're designing are for inference, specifically future inference workloads that they're expecting that, that will need to be done. The third and final point that I think is very important here to keep in mind, this is currently big tech's 
hype party. All this generative AI, uh, newsy, buzzy, clickbaity articles that we keep coming out, uh, this is benefiting big tech. Obviously, uh, Meta stock, NVIDIA stock, um, even the other big tech stocks have jumped in recent weeks because of this AI hype cycle. And, and for good reason, a lot of these companies are the pioneers of this generative AI. And so the early benefits of it are going to accrue to them. Uh, and even Meta, I think this is still to this day a, a grossly misunderstood aspect of Meta's business. They aren't just a social media company behind the scenes, uh, behind these apps that people all over the planet are using on a daily basis, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, um, and increasingly Reels, the, the video, uh, video on demand services on Facebook and Instagram. You have a massive network of very powerful data centers. In fact, uh, Meta's uh, research supercluster, or RSC, uh, they announced phase two of that was complete. Thousands and thousands of NVIDIA GPUs in that. It's it's likely one of the most powerful supercomputers on the planet. So of course, all this generative AI is accruing to big tech, but in the years going forward, this will increasingly also be a story of other smaller businesses benefiting from that early work and putting generative AI and other AI services to use in their operations as well. So for Meta, its chip development is an in-house thing, at least at this point anyways, there is no intention for them of ever selling a meta chip, a meta AI chip on the market. Uh, the inference, primarily inference chip competition that is coming for NVIDIA, uh, they also have inference chips, but it looks like there's some viable alternatives that big tech has developed in-house. Competition for them is a good thing. They can improve on their inference chips and that can translate to more efficient inference chip sales to smaller businesses that do not have the scale that big tech does to design their own silicon in-house. So uh, this is an early story still. I think it illustrates the reason why it's important to avoid the AI hype cycle. Some of these stocks uh, have shot up to perhaps an unsustainable level in the short term. And I think our focus going forward should be on other smaller companies that are also developing chips for this emerging AI industry and also businesses that are putting together really solid use cases that help them grow profitably, that help them grow sustainably. Uh, companies that are putting generative AI to work in that manner, manner uh, and avoiding some of the crazy AI hype going on out there. So uh, stay sane, stay nimble out there, folks. Take the media headlines that you're seeing on generative AI with a grain of salt uh, and at least uh, a little edge of skepticism here and do some digging on what this actually means. Uh, speaking of that, this week, uh, we are going to bring you our take on applied materials news apparently a big investment they are getting ready to make uh, into into their tech manufacturing equipment we don't know what that is but we'll let you know what it is and what it means when we see it also we'll be doing a comparison of airbnb versus booking holdings as well as palo alto networks and comparing it to fortinet our two top cyber security stocks. We will be doing that after Palo Alto Networks reports their last quarterly earnings on Tuesday.